What is up, y'all? It's your girl, brand new, and honey, I am back in the building. Listen, listen, this time, honey, I am back with a part two of Dr. Simone and Toya on the Carlos King, honey. Um, both of these women hate quad. There is some obsession with quad. I I, I keep telling y'all, I don't think some of you all believe me, but they are obsessed and threatened by everything that quad does. Toya called quad a gaslighter. Um, Toya brought up that Quad plays the victim, and then she got into this whole thing of, I feel like Quad conveniently apologized down to the reunion, because if you don't show remorse at the reunion, that's a nail in your coffin, and you're not going to have this job, and, you know... Quad, you know, really deserved to, you know, kiss my ass. Now, she didn't say that last part, but Miss Robinson said it. And I feel like that's what, what Toya wants. Toya wants recognition from Quad. And a woman like Quad is not going to recognize, uh, reconcile, shout out to Miss Wanda, a whack chick that can't keep a house and that, you know, it, it that has this man, but you can't stay in a house. You, you can't, um, maintain any stability. Okay. And I feel like, like I said, um, quad sees through the bullshiggity that Toya and Eugene do on this show. Toya and Eugene, um, are very performative. They want you to see only one side of their marriage. And Eugene just caters to Toya and um, he cooks, he cleans, he, you know, he, he spends time with the boys. And um, like I said before, I feel like Toya and Eugene's marriage is very one-sided. It is a marriage that basically serves Toya. Um, and we hear Eugene saying, yeah, but I'm satisfied, but yeah, but I'm, um, if, if Eugene get a hold to another woman that make things about him, he probably would want to leave Toya. But since he's comfortable with Toya and being her damn slave, honey, he probably ain't going to be, you know, be able to go nowhere and see something, honey, from the other side, because you're not in a healthy marriage. That is a representation of both of you. I think what happens with men like Eugene is um, a lot of us, you know, we get caught up with, you know, damn, ain't none of these men no damn good. And then we start um, having a God complex um, about men like Eugene. And like I said, it's, you know, it's, it's very nice to hear some of the things Eugene has to say as it pertains to marriage. Uh, he does, you know, seem fair in some of his ways. I like the fact that he allows Toya to be herself. He doesn't try to control her, but like I said, you know, two and three things can be true all at the same time. Eugene also needs to have boundaries with Toya and tell her, hey, I'm sick of moving. Hey, we have to stop spending so much money. Hey, we, we need to do this. He he needs to have boundaries with her. And I think a lot of people feel like because they are in a marriage, um, that means to let you know, their spouse say and do, you know, whatever they want to do in the marriage to, you know, their detriment, you know, to the detriment of their marriage as well. And so that's why they don't like quad. Um, because quad sees through the bullshiggity. Um, Simone brought up how she showed up for Quad, even though they wasn't at their best. Um, I guess um, she was there for Quad, I guess, when Quad's niece um, passed away. 
Okay. But my thing is I need more context to the story because did you like go to her house? Did you hold her? Uh, were you on the phone with her? Did you hold space with her in person? Like what exactly did you do? Cause I feel like the details was left out of that. Simone says that Quad is now mad at her again because the married to man fans, married to medicine fans told Quad Simone is a low down dirty bitch. You are, you don't have any boundaries. And not only do you not have any boundaries, you don't have no respect for other people's boundaries. You guys, y'all have to start paying attention to stuff like that. When a person tells you stop, or no, or I'm not feeling good, or I want to be contacted this certain way and not this way. All of that is a boundary. It is feedback. The person is saying to you, don't go there. Just stay right here with it. And you just went off on a damn tangent because you are also with a man that is afraid to call you out for your bad behavior. Because we remember last time he did, you wanted to divorce him along with the stuff with Tammy, right? Simone does not come off as somebody that is able to admit when they are wrong I think and she apologized I didn't buy the apology for what she did to quad I think she apologized because the audience saw what she did and she was dragged on Twitter that's why she's sorry um she kept saying oh I I just didn't mean it and girl ain't nobody buying that And even Carlos said to her, yeah, I wouldn't have said all of that. I would have said the incident at her house. But I think, um, I think Simone did that on purpose because she didn't want to protect Quad. She didn't want to protect Quad. She wanted to say what happened at Quad's house. That way everybody could look at Quad cockeyed crazy, uh, for the fact that this baby passed away at her house. You have to pay attention to the evil and malicious stuff that people do. And the fact that Simone behaved the way she did this past season, um, the fact that she pulled that stunt at the reunion, she said Quad hugged her right after. I wouldn't have hugged you and did shit. And I don't think that Quad probably really wanted to hug you. I think that it's fair to say that she said what she had to say to keep her damn job. Okay, but she still felt like you all owed her an apology for how y'all treated her in Napa and the whole damn season. Just treating her like shit. You don't treat people like that. If you don't want them around no more, then you get with the girls. Y'all make a decision and that's that. Don't be treating people in this disrespectful, dismissive, passive aggressive way. No, ma'am. And all of y'all, Toya, you included, are sorry because Twitter got to dragging that ass. Dr. Jackie got dragged this season. Heavenly, Toya, Simone, everybody got dragged for their bad malicious behavior Phaedra too miss oh I I gotta go to the drugstore just tell the damn truth for once in your damn life damn oh and did y'all see that um y'all see that interview Apollo did with Carlos child we gonna talk about that we going to talk about it. I'm going to add that to this video. That's what I will do. I will add that because I got a few things to say about that. No accountability, no remorse. He cheating on a new wife. Child, he was saying he was sorry, but it was just like it wasn't landing. To me, he just said what he needed to say so he could stay within that marriage. Apollo comes off very codependent, like he need to be up under somebody. I don't trust him, but we will get to it. Okay. Ain't nothing to it, but to do it, honey, we go get to it. Um, yeah, Simone is heartless. You guys, um, 
Simone also says she doesn't like the narrative that fans have about her and Toya and the rest of the girls trying to kick Quad off the show. They kept saying, oh, well, we don't have that type of power. Shit, y'all sure as hell was acting like you had that type of power. And you all invited her there on purpose just to send her ass home. You, this was premeditated. I can tell by how it was done. Then you hear Toya's stupid ass saying, I would have stayed up in Napa and just kicked it in her. Why would she stay? Don't you want her to feel bad? So you succeeded at making Quad feel bad. She was crying. She was hurt. Why is she go be fake? This is why I tell y'all, Toya's fake as hell. Just listen to what she says. Why would, after getting kicked off the trip, why would she act like everything is all good and still film and y'all asked her to leave? Okay, so make up your brother tuck in mind, Heffa. That Toya, she's whack, she's weird. And, you know, like I said, I've always liked uh, Toya... Um, because I felt like she was down to earth and very relatable and, you know, and I do still kind of feel like that, but I don't like, um, how she treats quad. I didn't like how Andy did not hold none of these women's feet to the fire for how badly they treated quad. He basically treated her like a redheaded stepchild, um, had her out there by herself, like nobody sent her a SOS, nobody had her back. Shout out to Carlos, because like I said, him doing that interview with her and validating her feelings and just being a support system to her during that tumultuous time, I know that meant everything to her, because I really felt bad for Quad. But that is... um what people you guys that's what they do all the time they see you strong you know nonsense you determine and they are determined to break you down put you in in lowest terms they want you to have low self-esteem they want you to bow down and acquiesce and do everything that they want you to do um and that is why they got pleasure from putting quad in that state okay you cannot tell me that they didn't um, Carlos, uh, got to saying that Quad was wrong for calling Eugene Eugina. No, she wasn't. No, she wasn't. Um, he acts like a bitch, like Heavenly said, and it, you know, it's sad to say, um, when you get in women's business, you are going to get treated a certain way. Now, this is very different from what's happening on uh, Love and Marriage DC. I don't think Clifton is a, a bitch or a mean girl. Did y'all hear what Ashley said to him? Tom? She said that to Joy. And I'm like, if Joy would have smacked your ass and your ass flew up in the sky, she would have been well within her right. You are wrong, Ashley. You don't look some woman in the eye and tell her that her husband is a mean girl just because you don't like the fact that he is defending his wife, which is something what? Your husband is always unavailable. Quick is unavailable. He's checked out of that marriage. And I think it's a trigger for Ashley to see how Joy and Clifton relate. Okay? Okay. I'll talk about Love and Marriage DC on another video because I do have to uh, catch up, you know, on a few things. But yeah, Ashley, you guys, trash. Throw the whole show away. I like Irena. I like Joy. But yeah, Ashley, straight up trash. Just, she's despicable. Oh, Toya said that Quad's reads are rehearsed. No, they're not. Uh, she tried to praise Phaedra over Quad. She feels like Phaedra's reads are more, um, you know, original and authentic. Shut up, uh, Toya. Like I keep telling y'all, I will continue to reiterate, Toya does not like Quad's confidence because she doesn't have it. 
There are women out here, you guys, that will hate you for being confident, for loving yourself, fulfilling yourself, for leaving a raggedy ass man and still bossing up and maintaining your lifestyle. Toya is jealous of all of that because she over there is struggling with Eugene and she knows that guess what? Without Eugene, what does she have? She doesn't have a leg to stand on. She doesn't know who she is. She lacks identity. She gets her identity from her proximity um, to Eugene. And there are women like that. And Toya is one of them. But yeah, very, uh, Toya is very jealous. And I knew when Quad apologized to her, that wouldn't be enough. She would steal. Yeah, well, I don't even think the apology was authentic. And I don't, bitch, girl, take, take that to the bank and cash it. Shit. This better be enough. Don't nobody got to kiss your ass because you's a whack ass bitch and, and you afraid to step out on your own outside of your husband and, and be a boss bitch. Toya don't want to put in the work. She just want to look like the part. Girl, I got you all figured out. Okay. Quad is a wordsmith and I prefer on Married to Medicine, I prefer Quad's personality and flair over Phaedra. Phaedra is dry. Phaedra act like she on the run. She's scared to halfway speak. You, she just was out of her element. There was a cute, you know, few little times where I was like, okay, I agree with Phaedra on that. Or she was funny, but she didn't serve nothing. That's why she brought Apollo to that third part of the reunion. Because she knows that the viewing audience felt like she didn't bring shit to the show this season. That's why she pulled that desperate move. That was a Scorpio move. Okay. Oh, let me, um, yeah, they want to see Apollo. Cause I ain't go be telling the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Let me go and get Apollo. Even Apollo said on his damn interview, I don't know why Phaedra be lying and be putting herself in, in certain situations. And at first I was agreeing with Apollo, but I'm like, shit, birds of a feather. You be doing the same shiggity. That's why your ass was married to damn Scorpios. Okay. But yeah, I felt like some of the stuff Apollo was saying to Carlos on that interview. I felt like it was true. I was like, damn, he, he show up. It's, and Apollo was actually kind of well-spoken. You guys, I was shocked. I was, I was kind of shocked. I was like, Ooh, child, make sure you say the right words at the right. But he was, you know, just speaking, speaking child. The people in the comments was dragging his ass. They was dragging him. I specifically though, I want to talk about the Kenya situation, but y'all let me wrap this up. Okay. Let me wrap it up. Oh, Simone says she does retweet certain stuff and she can get petty on Twitter, but she doesn't try to hurt people in a malicious way. You being petty like that can't hurt people. And when you saw that Quad was hurt, see, Simone is a very one-sided person. She can say and do whatever to you. Your ass better not say nothing. Ain't that right, Cecil? Very one-sided. She's abusive. And she's unwilling to admit that she's wrong. Like I said before, she's jealous of Jackie's friendship with Heavenly. Um, and it's very ironic that she likes to call out, um, heavenly for being Jackie's mouthpiece, but Toya be over there doing the same shit, just in a different way. So girl, bye girl. Goodbye. And she actually admitted that Jackie, I told y'all what she admitted at that reunion and that shit bothers her. She she tried to uh, make it look like on the show, she's not bothered by Heavenly or threatened by her because her and Jackie got 20 plus years. But why is uh, Heavenly and Jackie closer than what you and Jackie are? Make Look, make that make sense, Simone. So Simone is bitter. We know that Simone is very jealous and territorial with her friends, her man, and it's, I guess it's okay to be like that with your man. Cause that is your man and you married him, honey. You walk down the aisle, honey. So he do owe you something, honey. Okay. Um, Toya said that it took everything for Eugene to be quiet with the whole thing with Cecil. 
uh, telling Greg, um, you know, make a choice. Oh, just answer the question. Remember, they was trying to, um, but yeah, Toya was just, you know, really irritated with, you know, Cecil saying that to Greg. This is the whole thing with that, with Damon and, um, and Damon asks Gregory, you know, so do you believe I'm a cheater? This is the whole thing because Toya kept trying to say to Carlos, he doesn't know what that man would do. We didn't even think that Curtis was capable of doing that. See, this comes from the same woman that was upset about the rumors about her cheating on Eugene, but it was okay for her to mention that Quad may have slept with her contractor, right? To get some things fixed around her house or to even get her damn house. Okay. It was okay to go along with that. And I don't give a damn if she repeated it once or twice, you repeated a rumor and you was out of line for that. But yet you so mad at Quad for her repeating the rumor that you have possibly stepped out on Eugene and your own husband admitted on his interview with Carlos King that that came up. Y'all, y'all had a conversation about that. That ain't the shit that you said on the show. Cause you was, thank God that dude knows how I feel about him. Thank God Eugene knows that I really love him. So if it's like that on the show, then why wouldn't it be like that at home? Are y'all following me? Why don't those two things match up? Make it make sense. Okay. So Toya is somebody that lives by double standards. Uh, but yeah, Damon, who has my birthday, by the way, um, he's a stand up guy. There's nothing about Damon that gives off cheater. Now, mind you, nobody really knows what anybody would do, but guess what? If you've been friends with somebody for a while, you have seen their character. You have seen certain patterns of behavior. So guess what? If you keep seeing the wrong shiggity out of somebody, then you can, you can, you can form a, a, an opinion and say, you know what? I think that this person would do this, or I think that this person would probably do this. With the whole Jackie and Curtis situation, uh, Curtis kept telling Jackie, and this gives him no right to step out on her, but Curtis did keep telling Jackie over the seasons, you know, you, you spending too much time at work and, you know, I need more attention. And, and we heard what Jackie said season four at the reunion. Well, if we get to the place where, you know, Curtis is not happy and I'm not happy, then, you know, Curtis is free to do whatever he want to do. Now, by all means, she wasn't saying it's okay for him to cheat on her, right? I think Curtis took it like that, though. Like, oh, well, shit. Okay, I'm going to go and do, you know. So, and men do a lot of cheating to punish women and put that woman in her place. Because after Curtis cheated, what did you see out of Jackie? She was crying. She was all frazzled in her feelings. He wanted to break her down and put her in lowest terms. Okay. Because before you didn't see Jackie crying over that nigga like that, but they know if they can put you in in competition and in opposition with another woman, there's the emotion that I'm trying to get out of you. And it's a very manipulative, um, evil thing to do to somebody to get them to do what you want them to do is what I will say. Very malicious, right? We saw uh, Dr. Gregory with Quad and how he kept saying, well, I could see why a nigga, if he ain't getting what he need, you know, he may need to step out and Quad was looking at him. He told on himself right there. Okay, so we actually have Curtis actually cheated, slept with the woman, was seen with her in the airport, 
da 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 greg went to the hotel room the lady said he had a pinky size uh peter weeder shout out to simone because she has said that at one of the reunions about her boys okay um so dr g lied about sleeping with the woman he said nothing happened and he left but you was in that damn room and the way you were treating quad in them last days yeah you and y'all hadn't had sex in years nigga stop lying and quad had believed it Quad had believed it. And then you heard Toya. See, this is why you got to really watch the show, you guys. I heard Toya say, oh, you, she said it to Eugene. And I think it was this season. Yeah, Quad expected Dr. G to be loyal to her and they wasn't even having sex. This is the thing. If you are married, you're married. This ain't boyfriend, girlfriend, because in my eyes, when you are in a relationship, you still single, you're in a relationship, but you're not married. You ain't walked down no aisle. I don't owe no nigga, no loyalty. That's disrespecting me. I told y'all what I believe on this hair channel and I will stand 10 toes down in it. I don't owe nobody, no loyalty that is disrespecting me. Yes, we may be having a hard time, but there is still a way to be respectful of your mate, right? Right. And even still, like in my situations, when I've ever stepped out, my relationship was over. It was done. I ain't never fooled with these people. I was done. I was done with them or ended up leaving. Really did. But yeah, and the way they were treating me, shit, y'all know my attitude, okay? That's my attitude. Shout out to Trina. Yeah, I y'all know I, I, I don't do that. I am not Sister Mary Clarence, honey, in these, these here relationships. I don't play. Don't be talking to me crazy. Don't, um, if you ignore text messages, you're not showing up. Hell yeah, I'm stepping the hell out. Okay, hell yeah. Fine as I am, you think I'ma let all this shit go to waste that Desiree and Joe concocted? You done lost your damn mind. Somebody done told you wrong. Shout out to Martin, honey, okay? But I done got all off topic, honey, and went on a tangent, okay? But I'm Miss Robinson, and I'm back, okay? I'm back to drive the damn bus and to drive the point home. But yeah, like Toya was saying a, 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 a lot of inappropriate stuff. And she even blamed Jackie for Curtis cheating on Jackie. I'll never forget it. What was it at the season nine reunion? Jackie has said, yeah, you were blaming me for my husband cheating on me because Toya was seen on camera saying, well, he was lonely, Jack." Listen, if you want to step out, you want to get your drawers wet, you need to end your marriage. But no, he didn't want to end his marriage to Jackie because Jackie is a good lick. He wants to still reap the benefits of Jackie's money. That's why he brought his monkey ass back. I said it. Got that booger on your damn face. Take that damn booger off your face, Curtis. I'm talking about this mole. <laughs> Take that shit off your face. Stop playing, Curtis. Okay? That's why his, he brought his ass back. Because Jackie is a better lick than the side chick. We saw that with uh, Melody and Ariane and Martel. Why you think he never left Melody? Because she's the better woman. Better. Better on paper. Better everything. Why the hell am I going to leave my wife that has it all, that is everything? Y'all got to look at what people do, not just, yeah, he cheated and he did something temporary. What the hell did he end up doing? This nigga came right back to Jackie. Martell never left Melody. Facts. And still got the Ooga Booga Bear on the bench, child. What a baby this time. What, you know, looking like a damn fool. Okay, a cockeyed fool. Looking cockeyed crazy. I love that little saying, honey. So, yeah, Toya's perceptions of women and marriage and um, 
you know, she just has a very unhealthy uh, perception and perspective. But I think we, the audience, and it doesn't happen with me because I know better. I see, you know, underneath the surface, everybody is, oh, well, yeah, you know, she told Alicia, right? And yeah, you know, she said Alicia's straight on some things. But Toya has a messed up perception, too, where she overly defends niggas over women and they raggedy behavior and make excuses for the bad behavior. And that's what she was doing with the whole quad and Dr. G situation. Yeah. You know, why would quad expect for him to stay faithful? They weren't having sex. That nigga had every opportunity to end that marriage. And he never did. He is another one that did not leave because these niggas, they love like living in chaos destruction and confusion a lot of them are agents of chaos so they don't mind being in a toxic dysfunctional marriage because they feel like shit that's synonymous with who i am so why would i leave my primary environment that i'm used to why would i leave it okay so yeah So Toya also mentioned that Eugene hates that viewers see him as a feminine man. Hey, with the whole cooking and I think it goes far beyond the whole cooking and cleaning up after people. I, I think that the viewers actually love that, that part about your marriage, Toya, but Toya is on the surface. So she's trying to just, you know, bring up surface stuff. I think that a lot of the viewers see Eugene as a feminine man because it is feminine to get in Anila's DMs and um you get to gossiping uh to her and telling her that uh Heavenly and Quad ain't her friend. Toya admitted that Eugene did some uh bitch shit when he did that. Okay. Um, he's just overly vocal. I don't think that any woman with any common sense, um, that's fair, right? Has a, a, a issue with a man being vocal and having an opinion. Cecil, in my opinion, isn't that bad. Damon, of course, he don't even engage in this type of stuff. Okay. That's why Damon looked at Eugene on what was that? That last episode of married to medicine at that mad gala. And Eugene was trying to check Damon about heavenly putting his wife on front street. And Damon looked him up and down like, nigga, I I see you. I see your tacky ass ghetto ass wife. The bitch didn't donate. I ain't got nothing to do with it. Yeah, but you could get heavenly. And it was Eugene that was um, blowing up Damon's phone trying to get heavenly kicked off of YouTube. That's bitch shit. You're, you're doing way too much. You are way too involved. If you claim you love being a doctor so much, then niggas stay in that realm. Like he is like, he's overly like excited and pumped up and animated like he be doing too much so if your niggas go act like that you go get called sassy you go get called things you know like you like you a woman because at the end of the day married to medicine is, is about the women they the husbands they don't have contracts they're not getting paid it's the women Toya said Eugene pays the rent, but she's the breadwinner. Like, why do you keep talking about stuff like that? Why is that any of our business? Okay. She says that she has been perceived as the gold digger that shops all the time, that never saves. She regrets not showing that on TV. But girl, that was who you was at that time. You got to own it. Okay. She says she had to recreate her image on the show. And this right here is why she has a problem with Quad because Quad knows who she is and can stand on her own. Okay. And like I said, when a woman is not your equal lady, she will look for any reason to criticize you 
Toya really wants to be Quad's friend. She really wants attention from Quad. Okay, that's what it really is. I have relatives. They will tell you they can't stand me when really they feel rejected because I don't want shit to do with them because I don't feel like we have anything in common. They are not people that I want to associate with. I will never just associate with anybody just strictly because we are related. Are you trustworthy? Are you respectful? Do you respect my boundaries? It's a no to all of those. (laughs) So you can't be around me. And that's why I don't fool with them. But yeah, that's what it is with Toya and Simone. They They both got the same damn issue. Oh, Toya says that Eugene kind of struggled with her being the breadwinner and then he got her a gift and then that fixed everything. Like, girl, where is the story? Like, girl, so I'm not buying that. Child, one person says, let's get to Apollo. He he is the example of pretty privilege. Child, that's so funny. I'm going to read y'all some of these comments. So one person says, so because of this man's physical appearance, we are going to look past that he just cheated on his wife, the same woman who he prays for holding him down while in prison. Yeah, I guess him and Phaedra had drifted away from each other run away from me with this. And she got to, you know, flirting and texting, uh, uh, Mr. Chocolate, AKA allegedly Jamal Bryant, honey, but he denied that she denied that, but that's what the people say, honey. It was Jamal. Um, the person goes on to say, it sounds like he wants her to get over it. Why did you exchange numbers? Talk to and visit a woman as a married man. Cause he thinks that that's okay. And he feels like that woman, Shireen is desperate. And I told y'all, I, I don't feel like their marriage is strong. It, to me, it's built on a weak foundation. Um, Oh yeah, and he talked about Candy and Todd. So one person uh, made a comment and says, so you lied under oath about your possessions. So he could have got an extra, I think, five years for that. That's why he was so mad at Candy and Todd for telling... um, bravo and andy that you know they was keeping his stuff in their house i think candy was on watch what happens live apollo said he didn't appreciate them using that for a storyline like you are such a ungrateful ninja okay like you're making these people do something illegal like that's your middle name you're always doing something illegal and now you're mad at them because what they got the stuff in a house you thought it wasn't gonna get brought up why you didn't tell them to put the shit in storage okay and you still would have had to pay them back for the storage fees well, I figured they got a big house and, and they weren't supposed to talk about it on the show and they used that as a storyline and that whole thing could have set me back, but it didn't. Okay. So, um, the person says Candy revealed revealed it not expecting any repercussions the feds seized your items because you was out here stealing from people and you think candy and todd did you wrong apollo after this time you're you have yet to hold yourself accountable yeah he was he was not like being accountable for nothing as a matter of fact you made them your accomplice yeah what if they got uh, thrown into prison Okay, that's why you can't be friends with these criminals, honey. You'll get caught up and get locked up. They won't let you out. Okay. Oh, he gets to talking about Kenya. And this is where I have something to say. So one person says Apollo is gaslighting about Kenya. He was extremely attracted to her and he definitely wanted her because she's beautiful, not just because of her personality. Yeah, he kept saying that Kenya had a very, you know, fun, loving, jovial, you know, type of personality. Um, He shouldn't have never been texting her. And see, that's why um, Kenya went through what she went through with Mark because... 
girl, girl, boo boo, oatmeal pie face. You were flirting with somebody else's husband. You were flirting with that man. You all up in your confessional. He kind of foing. Now you could have said, well, you know, he seems nice looking. He seems fun to be around, but no, you was in your lust. He foing. You flirting with him. The damn wife didn't ask you to stay away from him. And you, you never could, never did. And then we watched her cry wolf when Mark, what, was being pursued by, what, one of his exes and she didn't want the sex to stop. See what happens when you play with other people's marriages and you ain't got no respect for their marriage and you so sexy and you so beautiful and they just couldn't help it. Kenya's self-esteem during that time was low. I don't care what anybody says. It was low as it could go. It was on the flow. That's how low it was. And her fan base will not admit to that because y'all like to rewrite history and only talk about, oh, she was Miss USA. She was just so beautiful and so smart and so put together. Child, Kenya came on Real Housewives of Atlanta, reduced put in lowest terms um she had a desperate energy to her she was desperate to get married practically begging walter to marry her she looked bad she did like any respect that we had for her at first we lost it that first season i never when i tell you i used to admire kenya i would see her on girlfriends on you know fresh prince of bel-air martin like a lot of the shows you know that was circulating in the 90s kenya would get on those shows right and she would have a little five minute parts in movies wait next hell is one of them you know like i I knew of Kenya. I didn't even know she was Miss USA, but I was like, oh, she's so pretty and beautiful. You know how they used to do the little sex symbols in the 90s, have them on shows. It was her and some other people circulating, you know, the black shows, right? So really liked her, had a lot of respect for her. I didn't even, like I said, I, I knew nothing about Miss USA. But once I realized that, and it was before Housewives, when I realized that, I, was, I wasn't shocked because I was like, oh, she's beautiful and smart and well-spoken, you know, so that whole thing. And then you get on here, you desperate, you running out of parties because Walter and made friends with your cast. I kind of thought a little of that was kind of crazy. I, th I feel like he did that to get under Kenya's skin. But I ain't going to be running out of no scene from no, because, you know, because that's what that nigga wanted to do. He wanted to run Kenya off. So that pissed me off that she allowed. I wasn't upset that Kenya was bothered, but I wish she wouldn't have, um, you know, let it got to her. Right. Especially on camera. Right. Like Cynthia had to tell her, girl, I'm in rooms with people that don't like me. I don't like them. And they used to be my ex or probably dated my ex. I don't give a damn shit. I just, I show up and show out. Okay. That's what Cynthia tried to tell the girl. I'm looking for a specific comment. You guys, let me find it. Because we go talk about this whole thing with Kenya and Apollo and him lying on her and, but she started everything. See, a lot of her fans, they like to negate that. So let me get to that because he brought it up uh, when he was talking to Carlos about Kenya. Okay. So one person makes a comment and says, Apollo is really dismissive on what his lie did to Kenya. Still to this day, Kenya is getting hate from what he said about her. And it's been 10 years of torture. So one person responds, responds to that and says, you must be Kenya. Leave other people, man, alone. We saw you. Child, one person says, I see why Apollo was a successful scammer. He is a word gymnast. <laughs> they say he know how to talk, honey. Okay. Child, you give Apollo some of that dying Julio, honey. He will talk them draws off. Okay. 
Child, y'all forgive me. I'm still looking for the post, right? But I want to say this really quick because I just saw another comment. Um, And the person says, and I absolutely agree because this is why I feel like Apollo is very much so delusional. The person says, if you willingly break the law and get arrested, you have to deal with the fact that you did something to get your to get taken away from your children. The mother is not obligated to bring them to you and expose your children to prison life. That part right there. When I tell you he had my stomach in knots when he got up there talking about uh, looking cockeyed crazy, telling Carlos, yeah, she should have brought those kids to see me. Yeah, she should have told those our children, that I'm a good man, I'm a good father. Nigga, if that's not what you are showing her or the children, she ain't got to protect your lie. It's the lies, honey, okay? That's not her job to build up an image of you that's not true. Then you wanted her to tell the children, yeah, tell the kids that they daddy really loved them. Nigga, you should have showed it and stayed out of trouble. Okay, some of you uh, ninjas, y'all be thinking somebody is supposed to protect your bad character. There are consequences and repercussions for effing people over. Ain't that right, Diddy? Okay, like look at Diddy and everything he going through. That's years of screwing people over, stealing their publishing, spending their money bragging, throwing stuff in people's face. When you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. Like, if I was Phaedra, I wouldn't have Shiggity to do with him. And Candy looked like a damn fool telling Phaedra, yeah, you should, you know, all he got is a few years. Just take the kids. I got fam. Bitch, I didn't ask you about your family. And hell no, I'm not taking my children to a prison because this nigga don't want to do the right thing. I done created a whole damn business, a damn uh, funeral empire. And this nigga don't want to work. And be a part of it and do something legit to make money. He want to go out and be lazy and steal other people's pensions. Make that make sense. That shit got on my nerves from Candy. And she start talking all stupid like that because her ass went from single mom. Because let's face it, she wasn't a wife when she first got on Housewives. Um, when she got with Todd, she started to change and she got on this for my man and for all these raggedy ass men, uh, shiggity start defending the wrong stuff. Okay. But yeah, I guess Todd and him had ended up patching things up. Todd apologized. I wouldn't apologize for shit. You put your own self in that situation. You got your own self in that predicament. That's your problem. Okay, this isn't really the comment, you guys, but, you know, I don't want this video to be longer than what it has to be. So let's get back to the Apollo and Kenya stuff. So one person is defending Kenya. They're saying um, what Apollo did to Kenya hurt Kenya deeply. Like she is some poor perpetual victim. Till uh, Still till this day, there are still wackos out there running with the story that Kenya wanted Apollo. He admitted to lying and apologized for it. Okay. Character and reputation are more important to many people than money. It does at least for Kenya and you can't take that away from her. That's part of the reasons why she doesn't engage in physical fights. Blah, blah, blah. Child, she she probably can't fight. That's why she probably don't engage. And she starts a lot of shit. Okay. One thing that people do with Kenya is they try to make her so innocent and she's not. So this one person is saying what I'm thinking. The person says you missed the part 
where Kenya started all of this, trying to have a storyline saying Apollo was texting her. Okay. She started all of that. Calling him babe. Um, she called him, she said he was fine in the confessional. She called him babe. When Apollo said she looked nice and did a good job, I guess on her Wendy Williams, uh, interview. Okay. Um, that's inappropriate. You don't call nobody husband, babe. Kenya also said to Phaedra, somebody husband strays. Okay. See, when you start throwing a woman's husband in her face and alluding to the fact that, oh, her husband wants you when really it, it was you that started all of this. It was Kenya that pushed Apollo into um, the pool. It was her flirting with him. I believe that part of what Apollo said. That's what was showed on the show. Carlos asked, was he attracted to her? Of course he was. Kenya is a beautiful woman. But he said that he liked her personality. I believe him. Because that's what played out on the show. That's what we saw. They both had this, you know, gregarious personality, you know, where they like to joke around and, you know, they had, they had that similar to like a Greg and Nene, not a Greg and Nene, uh, Nene, Peter and Nene, you know, where they was cool and, you know, they felt comfortable around each other and kind of, you know, going back and, and, and forth with each other, right? So, and I don't think Phaedra had an issue with them being friendly with each other, but you calling her husband, babe, you in the confessional saying he fine. She catch you season six. She asked for you to stay away from her husband, but you, you didn't respect that boundary and you asked to speak alone with her husband anyways, even Todd went with Apollo to speak with Kenya. That way it wouldn't look funny to Phaedra. He tried to prevent it from looking inappropriate. Okay. And some of you all, because you are fans of Kenya, you want to say, yeah, but she's so attractive. She's so beautiful. It's a lot of beautiful women out in the world. And the shame of it all is that this beautiful woman that won Miss USA was desperate as, and thirsty as hell when she got on this show. She was flirting with all type of men on the show. She was supposed to be with Walter, her boyfriend, right? But flirting, she had her ass all on Peter. All of that type of energy isn't like innocent flirtatious energy. It's from a woman that feels rejected. I'm not married. I don't have kids. So what do women do with low self-esteem, even if they're pretty? Oh, let me use my looks. That's why Phaedra said to her one time, where have your looks gotten you? Because Kenya is one of those women, and you cannot tell me she is not, where her identity is, involves her looks heavily is yeah I look good and I'm this and I want Miss USA and no your personality how you treat people is flawed it's messed up that's why you went through karma with Mark all that shit she did with Phaedra you can't tell me it didn't happen it didn't come back around full circle on her but no, you got some of the Kenya stands, and I know I've seen some of the content creators. Oh, that felon, he he wanted he wanted Kenya, that felon, he wanted the beauty queen, and she's this and no. The beauty queen was desperate, she was thirsty, she was still desperate and thirsty once she got with Mark. That's why she put up with his bad behavior. See, these bitches, they be having money. Her and Sheree. Sheree dating a nigga in prison. Low self-esteem. Why? There's no reason for you to do that. And you got the money you got. The house you got. Shit. I wish I would. 
So it don't matter how you look. Low self-esteem is low self-esteem. Don't matter how much money you got. Low self-esteem, low self-esteem. Desperate, thirsty. Let me try to flirt with somebody else, man, and make it look like he won't meet. That's what she was doing. With the Apollo and Phaedra situation. Well, Apollo, he would have slept with her. Apollo would sleep with anybody. (laughs) So it's not a flex. I'm sure he was attracted to Kenya. I'm sure he was attracted to a lot of different women outside of Phaedra. That's most men. They are, they will be attracted to other women. But that's why Apollo, and this is what I got to bring home to you guys. That's why Apollo was able to make up that lie about Kenya due to her bad behavior. It was Kenya's bad behavior to where that's why a lot of people felt like, dang, maybe she did try to suck him off. It was her touching him, pushing him in the pool. You don't do that to somebody else's husband. And y'all don't have that type of relationship. Some of y'all Kenya stands. Y'all act like y'all don't remember when she asked Phaedra to have a threesome with her man. Okay, and Phaedra got upset and said, get out of my face. I will smack the shit out of you. Desperate energy, desperate, thirsty energy. But some of y'all will swear up and down. Oh, she's just so beautiful. And oh, she could have took that man. And there is no honor amongst thieves. Somebody was what? Somebody was able to take Kenya's man. But is that a flex? Because Mark Daly, he ain't no damn good either. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like y'all need to start telling this story the right way. That's why Apollo's lie was believable. And that's why Apollo said he said what he said. Because she mentioned at the reunion, yeah, I be uh, texting her all the time and... That was Kenya that said that about Apollo. And then he was like, oh, this is where we going with it? Okay, well, I'll make up a story about you trying to suck me off. See, that's why you should not do all this lying on people or try to use it as a storyline or try to... She was doing something with that. Outside of her behavior, it was her. Well, he was texting me. The, the, the texts were friendly. You shouldn't be texting nobody, husband, and he shouldn't be texting you. To me, it's inappropriate on both sides. But you know that he wasn't texting you nothing inappropriate, Kenya, but she wanted to F with Phaedra. And she knew that would be the way to do it. She wanted to get back on Phaedra. Because of the whole donkey booty video thing. Child, don't let me get started on that. But yeah, y'all got to talk about the history. Everything. Not just, oh, he lied on Kenya. Okay? She helped him with that lie. She helped. Apollo actually said on that interview with Carlos, that Phaedra was done with him. She wasn't showing up to court. She wasn't really trying to help him out after he got sentenced. Um, She was MIA. I believe all of that. I do. So for Phaedra to get her ass down to the married to medicine and say, well, maybe our marriage actually had a chance and maybe we could have overcame some things. Girl, you was checked out of that marriage. I believe Apollo. You was checked out. You was embarrassed. Apollo says some white man got to telling her, girl, he making you look bad. And Apollo, quiet as cap, it don't take no white man to say that. Anybody with eyes could see that, that you bad for her image, her reputation. But guess what? Both of you all represent two sides of the same coin. That's why both of you all were drawn to each other. Okay? So, yeah, that's all, honey, I got to say about that. Don't forget, guys, to like, comment, and subscribe. I am your girl, brand new, and I will check you guys out in the next video.